Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast, presented by Strategic Treasurer, your source for interesting treasury news, analysis, and insights in your car, at the gym, or wherever you decide to tune in. On this episode of the podcast, host Craig Jeffrey joins John Paquette, Senior Financial Solutions Expert at Treasury Intelligence Solutions, to discuss the significance of foundational visibility, seeing is knowing, with view to liquidity and disruptive times. They provide valuable insights on cash flow requirements, cash visibility, eliminating blind spots, good corporate conduct, and more. Listen into the conversation to find out more. Welcome to the Treasury Update Podcast. This is Craig Jeffrey. I'm here again with John Paquette. He's a senior financial solutions expert at Treasury Intelligence Solutions. Welcome to the podcast again, John. Thank you, Craig. Thanks for having me. I was eager to have this conversation about foundational visibility, and we spoke a little bit about context and just for others who are listening in, you know, this idea of visibility has been really important, particularly important since 2008, 2009, even through 2010 with the financial crisis where people said, I need to know where my money is, where my exposures are across the board. And there was a significant effort among many companies to expand that. As we move forward to the current environment where almost everyone's working from home in the COVID-19, that expectation of having visibility is very common. There's expectation to know where it is, you know, what currency, what account, what bank, what country, and these, uh, latest disruptive events brought this visibility back to the front line, particularly for those who didn't have that clear sense of visibility. And we saw this in the Global Crisis Monitor as part of the Treasury Coalition and TIS as part of the Treasury Coalition. So thank you for that. And we saw that in terms of um, liquidity demands of organizations needing to know where their cash is um, across their banking structure concerns about receivables and whatever the models are in the forecast are certainly looking different because companies are paying slower and your models may not catch up, but it certainly catches up when it hits the bank account. Organizations are spending more time modeling to get a view of that. They're spending time forecasting, just really seeking to achieve that type of visibility. And so there's, there's a lot of attention on this now for good reason. It's foundational, it's core. But getting to that, you know, in terms of what are the what are the questions that Treasury needs to answer in times that are disruptive like this, but also at all times. So, what are the questions, John, as you look at them, that uh, Treasury needs to be able to not only articulate but but have the the information to articulate that information. Yeah, you know, I think that it's really these kind of foundational items that you alluded to here, really, you know, wh- what are my cash flow requirements? Where are my cash balances? You know, where, where am I holding my cash? What currencies do I have exposure to and in what countries, right? So I think that these are, you know, really the aspects that most organizations are looking to capture with, with this foundational liquidity type topic here as well, right? And then and even to build on that a bit, I think, you know, uh, having good visibility into how the cash is moving around your business uh, being able to quickly identify any unexpected cash flow movements or, you know, really anything else I think is is really important for, for business as well because the uh, COVID-19 crisis here has brought liquidity back into focus for a lot of organizations. But, you know, the, the one differentiator probably between 2008 and 2010 is that most organizations are trying to do most of this remotely, right? So, you know, if you didn't have a good process in place uh, before really that was scalable and adaptable to the remote reality, um, those organizations are really being, uh, I think, exposed at this point too. So you know, you have these core questions that that um, that organizations are trying to 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 answer, and then likewise, I think CFOs are really asking more and more questions on a day to day basis than they typically are as, would be as well, just because of the situations that we're in now. Yeah. Now you mentioned um, something along the lines of these surprises. What do you mean by surprises, and how do you address that? Yeah, so I think it's really anything that's uh, you know not in your uh, normal cash flow projection, or really any unexpected cash movements across the business as well, right? So you know anything that you're tracking in terms of actual cash movements versus cash uh, cash forecasted movements, 
anything in terms of you know foreign currency movements that are that are coming in and really need to be managed any risk elements and things like that as well that the organization maybe wasn't expecting right so you know anything that the organization doesn't have true visibility into um, to be able to you know see instantly here and really mitigate that risk becomes a point of exposure for a lot of companies I think I guess some of the stuff we're looking at we see concerns about AR that's been extraordinarily pessimistic hyper pessimistic from a week to week basis uh, and and then now from a every two week basis people are looking at their liquidity position that's driven from AR and that's week to week it's been very negative deteriorating each time is that part of what you're talking about there the surprise is like oh I'm not going to collect what I have collected historically because things have shifted or is there other other things as well? Yeah, no, I think that that's a big a big point of it for sure. You know, a lot of organizations that we've been having conversations with as well see that same AR aspect, right? You can't really rely on those run rate AR collections anymore. Uh, those numbers have slipped a bit. DSOs have slipped a bit too here too. So um, any real visibility into those cash movements that you can use to track how, how effectively you're collecting cash has really come into focus, I think, for a lot of organizations as well. So yeah, that's a really key uh, a key component of it as well as as well as some of these exposure elements, foreign exchange uh, ex- exposure, currency exposures and things as well as some of the components that we're hearing a lot from organizations too. Good point about the impact on like with FX, but the idea of visibility naturally has some kind of timeliness to it. Like what's the value of if you get a newspaper delivered at the bottom of your driveway, if it's a week old, there's not much value for it other than perhaps for wrapping up fish or something, but there's a, there's value. I need information in a timely manner, uh, not a week old, not two days old. I need it more real time. And, and that concept of speed matters is important when we talk about treasury and knowing where's my liquidity, for example. Can you address address that concept uh, in some depth? Right, yeah, I think that there are a lot of different aspects that really come into play here as well. You know, the, um, the DSO aspect that you mentioned before with receivables slipping here a bit, or really anything that occurs in these abnormal times, um, you know, speed becomes even more of an important element here as well, right? So, you know, you can't rely on your kind of run rate cash collections here, or certain DSO metrics and things like that too. Really, only the only the way to really get a, a clear picture of your overall cash position is to have this real time visibility. And you know, in that sense, uh, it's important to be able to see these numbers uh, as updated as they could possibly be. Your balance is as updated as possible as well. Um, you know, likewise, there could be certain risk elements here, like foreign currency positions moving into your accounts that need to be hedged, or any other exposures, even exposures to you know certain banks and counterparties and things like that too. So. I think time is certainly of the essence when it comes to those those aspects as well. On the global crisis monitor, which is now the global recovery monitor, we saw uh, payables, uh, people identifying their organization is paying slower. The first uh, cycle that we asked that question, it was, it was over 30% of organizations were paying some or all of their vendors more slowly. The next time, the next cycle, it was a little bit over 40%, I think about 43%. Now that's good information to know that there's a general slowdown, but that's not enough to say, we're gonna adjust our receivables by 43%. Your impact might be higher, more negative. It might be there's a shift in days because they can't get their AP area up, but you're going to see that in your bank account, I think far more rapidly than you're gonna get it from the the AR group. And so this timeliness of, hey, we're off 20%, you know, for this past week, you know, we're down 10% or we had a dip and it seems like we're, we've just had our receivable shift about 10 days. That kind of information seems far more useful than the general, you know, hey, I'm going to find out way late because you need cash to be able to to cover things, cash needs to be in the right accounts, in the right currencies, um, obviously in the right banks too. Those are a couple of elements of why visibility matters. It has to be timely visibility. It has to be complete. And John, you mentioned a couple things about how do we have a complete view and eliminate blind spots. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to just talk on that topic. Um, you know, what are the blind spots? 
Yeah, so I think that for a lot of organizations, there are certain accounts that they don't view as being essential to get visibility into. You know, we see a, a lot of different things. Sometimes it can be a function of uh, how organizations have grown over time and really, you know, uh, accumulating accounts, or acquiring accounts um, that they view as legacy accounts, really not, you know, core to their business. But there are still cash movements, you know, in and out of these accounts as well. Um, you know, and it seems like these accounts that aren't monitored as frequently here are typically where the unexpected uh, items happen. The f potential fraudulent items as well seem to always, you know, pop up in these in these accounts as well. So without having 100 percent visibility, there are always these, you know, so-called blind spots. I think you have to be cognizant of. Yeah, it's like the uh, blind spot in your car, knowing that <laughs> you have to make adjustments to account for it makes sense. So so these challenges of, um, you know, if you look at the the limiting the blind spots, those are, those are some of the challenges. But I think one perspective is it's so much easier to say, hey, let's get foundational or complete visibility across our enterprise. That's so much easier to say than to make it happen. And, and the reason that's the, the case is that there's a lot of challenges to getting there. I thought we could just spend a few moments talking about what are some of those, some of those challenges um, you know, for different size organizations and different industries. What makes that a what makes that a challenge, or what are the challenges? Yeah, so I think maybe a lot of different aspects, you know. So first of all, uh, you know, a lot of these organizations that have grown through acquisition, like we were mentioning before, or even you know, organizations that have grown organically, uh, sometimes have an account structure that they really don't even recognize how complex it's gotten, right? So. A lot of the times we'll go to organizations and the first step that they have to take to really get a handle of their account structure is to send out inquiries across all the different departments and regions and things to really, you know, accumulate the, uh, the information around what their bank account structure looks like, right? So if you don't have that full idea of what you're, what you're dealing with to begin with, it's pretty tough to get, you know, full visibility into those accounts or really even start building those, uh, those systems that way. You know, likewise, a lot of organizations uh, experience some difficulties with lack of really integration between multiple different systems, right? So, you know, maybe the ERP doesn't talk to the cash reporting tool quite as robustly as you'd like it to. So you have some, um, you know, visibility into statement type information, but not cash in transit type items like payments that have been initiated and, and not yet uh, released. You know, I think can be a, an aspect as well. You know, and then overall, I think the quality of the data, you know, is, is really important as well. You know, the transparency around the data. Where does it come from? Is it all being brought in through a reliable source like an electronic bank statement? Or is it maybe being compiled from multiple different departments who are, you know, using various manual input methods and things like that, too? So, you know, how much can you really rely on this data to complete these foundational processes? Those are certainly complexity driven, right? We've, uh, we've acquired firms. We haven't rationalized our banking structure. We have lots of systems. We continue to upgrade them. Even our rationalization programs oftentimes leave us with, with multiple systems. And then the last one you talked about, the data quality, is interesting because, um, yeah, if you're pulling the information from banks, uh, the bank statements, it should be up to the date, up to date and current. If you're getting it from other areas, are they keying it in off of their old bank statements? Are they keying it out of their accounting system? What they have as cash uh, from an accounting system standpoint, that, those can be quite different from what availability you actually have uh, across the board. Right. Yeah. I think that that's a key point as well. And that's the, you know, that's the transparency aspect. Where did the data come from? What exact balance are we looking at here? Is it the booking balance, the available balance? is really everybody talking about these numbers really in the same terminology and from the same vantage point here. Yeah. You know, as, as you talked about the data and accessing it from different systems, it made me, uh, it made me think about the title of this episode. We call it foundational visibility seen is knowing. And it also seems like, uh, access is, access is gold. I don't know. We, that would be too long of a title for a session, but you have to have visibility to it in the system that you're using or the multiple systems that you're using to be able to make the right decisions. That might be in an ERP. It could be in your treasury management system. It could be across the board in different, uh, you know, your forecasting platform, if you will. So it seems like that. And I, I guess as we look at the, the challenges you laid out, decentralization, integration challenges, delays, uh, delays of data or data quality, 
you know, one of the challenges that I see, and I wanted us to talk about this, is it's easy to say we want foundational visibility across the board. That makes sense. As treasury professionals, you and I are echo chambers of each other. Yes, it needs to be done. But sometimes there can be a, um, a cost-benefit analysis mindset versus a different standard. So it might be, like, hey, what's the, what's the cost benefit of having access to all of your bank accounts, banks, currencies across the globe? And like, what's the cost benefit of that versus this is a standard of good corporate conduct? You know, that issue of if you have a bank account, you need to be able to see what's in it, or you probably don't need an operating bank account if that's not important. And I'm just, you know, as you think about that, what are the, is that perspective a bigger challenge than the ones you mentioned before, or it's just part of the other side of the coin? Um, maybe we could talk about that challenge because I, I, I want to I wanna help defeat that perspective in our discussion today. Yeah, no, I think it's certainly a, a consideration. It's something that we hear quite often is that, you know, okay, we really only need uh, visibility into our key cash management banks here, really the, the bulk of our transaction activity and balances and things too, right? So the other balances don't move very frequently or, you know, maybe, maybe there's not a huge cost benefit, as you say, uh, to having, those, the, uh, having full visibility into those accounts as well. But I'd agree with you in the fact that I think there's a control aspect of it, right? So if you have an account uh, that you're not really monitoring actively on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, really anything can happen, right? So a fairly large balance can move into that account or something fraudulent could happen within that account or you know, really uh, any number of different things could happen within that account and, and the organization really would, wouldn't really have any idea. So I think it's, you know, to your point, maybe an organizational mindset to see it as this you know, standard of good corporate conduct to have this visibility aspect into all accounts or otherwise really you know, conduct that analysis to, to determine if that account is even needed, can it be consolidated, you know, can the banking relationship maybe be, uh, can be absorbed by another bank you know, to really reach that 100% uh, visibility in, in another way. I think the burden of proof should be on those who say we don't need visibility. The default position should be we get visibility. And getting visibility in a cost-efficient manner should be how it's implemented, but those seem to be the foundational aspect of, I have an account, what am I going to do with that account? I need to see balances on a daily basis. Oh, you don't need to do that. We don't need to see them. We can get a paper statement at the end of the month and get it seven days after that, after they choose to scan it and send it over to us. That seems, that's slow. That's like, here's your 35 day old newspaper. What, what happened to the value of the news or the information at that time? It's, the value is essentially wiped out because it's so late. And I, you know, I think the other mindset is every time someone's looking for visibility and they get trapped into this, let's do a cost benefit analysis on it. You have to say, no, if we have an account, this is a minimum standard is that we see the information on a daily basis. We don't do a cost benefit analysis on whether we're going to do a bank reconciliation activity on these accounts. Yeah, you don't say, let's do a cost-benefit analysis on whether we're going to do bank reconciliation. These accounts are small. There's not much money. Well, it doesn't take much time. Okay, well, we're, we're going to do a cost-benefit analysis. Watch heads explode when you say that. And that's because it goes against the mindset, the accounting mindset, generally accepted accounting principles. I need to control what goes through my financial statements, which means I need to monitor and validate, which means I need to do bank reconciliation. And the same thing is true is if I have bank accounts, I need to see that information on the same day or a real time basis, or I don't need it, you know, at least for all the operating accounts. You can, you can make arguments about, well, I have an account that we have to keep $1,000 just to keep it open. Nothing flows through that. Do I really need to pay to connect that? Um, that could be a different argument, but certainly for, for the operational mindset, we need to do that. I don't know if that makes that makes sense to you not, or not, John, or if that's the same uh, same type of arguments you make. I would agree with that 100 percent. I mean, it's almost one of those items that transcends, you know, a cost benefit analysis in terms of, you know, if you are going to make uh, maintain solid control over your cash management and your cash controls, 
you need to be able to see all of your bank accounts, right? And by the same token, I think that you know most organizations who even would go through that cost benefit analysis would find out that the cost is not huge if they're already gonna be moving to a solution that captures you know, 85, 90% of their connectivity uh, and, banking, and banking transactions to really you know, expand that out to 100% really. So, and obviously the benefits that you gain there in terms of you know, overall control and visibility over the account are, are enormous. You know, likewise, through having complete visibility into that account, you'll be able to monitor it more closely and determine if it's even appropriate to keep those you know, kind of you know, inactive accounts open, the ones with minimal transaction activity or minimal balances uh, a lot more closely too. So ultimately there's a payoff for organizations from that standpoint, I think as well. But you know, even before you get to that point, I think it's a mindset of, okay, you know, we're gonna have 100% visibility into our accounts to maintain the right degree of control at an organizational standpoint. Yeah, good point. You know, this, this idea of, um you know, we've got uh, these different challenges. Treasury has these challenges. Most treasury groups are still overcoming some of these challenges. Quite a few have figured it out, but let, let's talk a little bit about consequences, about the environment. Um, I, I started off mentioning financial crisis back in 2008 to 2010. We covered why that moved into to Vogue and many organizations achieve 90%, 95%, 100% visibility to their bank accounts on a daily basis or at least a weekly basis. We would say, and from what we've seen, uh, and you can give feedback from from your view as well, we've seen a lot more support bubble back up again since this latest disruption that's happened where everyone's now working from home. They still need data. They need it in different systems in different places. Maybe you could talk about the consequences of having visibility or not having visibility? Yeah, sure. So, you know, I think that the, the obvious one is that it impacts your ability to make good business decisions with your cash, right? So your use of cash, how your organization is overall funded, you know, whether you have excessive debt, if you could pay down additional debt, maybe invest some of that uh, cash and, you know, really even transcending into, you know, or moving into items like your overall exposures, your currency exposures, your counterparty exposures, and how you manage those through visibility, really, you know, your, your, the degree of visibility that you have really dictates how effectively you're able to manage uh, every single one of those. And so for organizations that don't have that visibility, um, you know, obviously there's, there's consequences to be ineffective in any one of those areas. But I think also, you know, the, the visibility also drives or, you know, the, the ability to get real-time data and, and that visibility that, it, that you get as a result really drives uh, downstream processes as well, right? So, you know, a lot of other systems are relying on that data from forecasting, you know, cash flow forecasting, uh, recording your actuals and things like that too, you know, that can be impacted if you don't have that real degree of, uh, of uh, visibility as well over your accounts, or even, you know, the ability to automatically send electronic bank statements into ERP systems to facilitate automated reconciliation and things like that too. Those processes are probably lacking if organizations don't really have this foundational visibility and a way to, you know, aggregate these electronic bank statements. Yeah, that's that's good. I'm I'm thinking the the more visibility you have, like why do you have fog lights on your car if you're driving? Well, it lets you see farther when times are uh, when there's a lack of visibility. It gives you that extra edge, um, and you have more time to respond to avoid the pothole or uh, the the chunk of tire that's in the road. That is useful at all times, but particularly when things are changing and changing dramatically. You mentioned FX um, a little bit ago, and you, you talked about cash forecasting as well. Maybe we could get into FX again. So visibility has an impact on foreign exchange, our exposures, uh, how we manage and mitigate risk. Maybe you could just talk about FX or, or forecasting uh, around FX, if you would. Yeah, so I think that there's a, or maybe a few different factors in terms of, you know, seeing actual foreign currency movements into your accounts, being able to recognize those quickly, hedge those balances if that's your organizational policy, and be able to really, you know, mitigate any sort of market movement against the organization, I think is, you know, a, another really key component of visibility as well. Likewise, I think that, you know, cash flow forecasting uh, is really only as good as the data that's driving it, right? So from both a, uh, a projecting standpoint, the information that's driving your and the assumptions that are driving your overall forecast, uh, but then the actual data that you're receiving in as well to populate those actuals, you know, particularly for organizations that are doing, you know, a rolling cash flow forecast. 
um, they might, you know, get to the end of the week and realize that, you know, the balance isn't exactly what they think it, it, it would have been based on the cash flow forecast. But without the real visibility into those transactions, they're not quite sure why and really how to adjust the forecast on an ongoing basis. So I think some of those, you know, elements uh, impact organizations from a visis- visibility standpoint as well. Yeah. And your comment about hedging was interesting, too. Um, you know, let's say someone's laddering their, their FX uh, hedges. As you get closer to the date, they go up to 70% or 75%. And then all of a sudden the cash flow gyrates wildly or very quickly. It changes due to the nature. Well, if you're not getting an earlier read, you're following your regular protocol and you're going from 60 to 75%. Well, let's say your cash flows for that foreign currency dipped from a you know expected 100% to 50%. And you just hedged at 75%. So now you basically move to a speculative hedge. You're uh, hedging a cash flow, you know, with something that's 1.5x what uh, you're expecting, what, what, what's happening, because it dipped by half and you continue to hedge at an upper level. So I think that gets added to your investment, investment uh, income over borrowing, business decisions, and FX as well. John, as we wrap up, uh, I wanted to give you an opportunity to give us an elevator pitch length uh, argument for why visibility is a minimum standard of good corporate conduct. Why is it so essential? Right. Yeah. I think what we've seen from the conversation is that, you know, really cash visibility is really the driver of any good decision making in treasury, whether that be business decisions around managing liquidity, uh, funding needs, uh, investing excess cash or paying down debt. Or really, you know, more of these foundational type aspects, these control type aspects in terms of uh, the visibility allowing for quick recognition of any unexpected or abnormal activity in your accounts, any fraudulent activities, and really facilitating this standard of good corporate contact, co- conduct here. So I think overall, you know, it's easier than ever for uh, organizations to achieve 100% visibility as well with, you know, some of the channels out there today and specialized providers that can utilize a number of different connectivity protocols to, to facilitate that. And really to sum it up, you know, I think that, you know, overall you can't manage what you can't see and treasurers have a lot to, to manage out there. So the more visibility, really the better. You've reached the end of another episode of the Treasury Update podcast. Be sure to follow Strategic Treasurer on LinkedIn. Just search for Strategic Treasurer. This podcast is provided for informational purposes only, and statements made by Strategic Treasurer LLC on this podcast are not intended as legal, business, consulting, or tax advice. For more information, visit and bookmark strategictreasurer.com.